welcome in uh, apparently we've got some content today there is a dev talk dev stream thing that's happening it is uh ml7 and svb are going to be having this stream i actually dm'd svb already and asked him if it's cool if i watch his stream and like react content to it uh and he said it's fine um SVV's always a homie like that, so. Pumped, ready to go. What are we hoping for Pumped, question go, mark angry. backslash? Uh, I want to hear about power creep and how they are going to uh, deal I with it when they introduce new heroes. You ready? Oh, we're jumping right into you it. You ready, Jeff? Yep. Yep. What hero do you main? <laughs> yeah, this is like a pretty common question, actually, I get asked. I feel like, honestly, I feel like it's a little bit of a trap. I'm always a little worried about it. <laughs> you know, I probably shouldn't be, but uh, the reality is, it's like, when I'm playing, I'm usually playing, like, whatever... I feel like maybe needs attention or people are saying he's either overpowered or underpowered or whatever, just trying to like kind of get a gauge of, you know, if I agree with it or not, <laughs> whatever. But when I'm not doing that, if I'm really just playing like, ah, oh, I just don't play, you know, whatever I want to play this time. It's, um, I play a lot of hit scan. I play like widow, uh, soldier. We're getting the there. Hugo, we're getting the there. Hugo, we're the getting Hugo. there. Damn, game. Game. What the hell? I don't play play Jeff. Rat, although I do love oh, Jugrat. No, 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 we said this yesterday. No. Jokrat, I, he's, he's, he's about as far as he, away from Hitscan as possible. I know it's kind of opposite of what I just said, but I just have so much fun with him. Check, he's kind of just camera. chaos incarnate, and I, I don't know. I like it looks to, like you're you were in know, the Q&A. I, 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 right, I, I don't stand back and spam, spam the corridor. I, you know, I, I go for like sort of the the Mimi air shots and, you know, flying direct all hits Jankat and stuff. All Junkrat plagues say that. Honest, uh, Jeff, all <laughs> Junkrat plagues say that, but then I got them die from across the map, and they go like, calculated, you know? Still <laughs> yeah. faded. Fair enough. My most play heroes are probably uh, Zarya, Ana, May, Farah, and Tracer. Wait, you said May. Ooh. Okay, goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 a, that, that's a good hero pool. I expect that. I expect that. that. That's a noble hero pool. There's Jeff over here with the with the junk rat. <laughs> Josh has got the noble hero pool. Noble? Imagine, May? Can... Nah, come on. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I guess I'm a little bit biased. I don't really like you know, May at all. Uh, but... Junk rats are getting favorite balance treatment because <laughs> i don't think a lot of people have considered him to be super good except for donkey apparently <laughs> yeah yeah honestly yeah, yeah you, you self-aware i, I love it dude i don't want to play against you too. You actually know, true no isn't yeah, no. donkey joking so you have the you have the, i mean i don't know you? that what whole you, entire uh, video uh, must have been a joke my then. peak is 4350. Um, i never he actually broke into the 4400 but it's like kind of like it's like kind of one of those like oh just joking. This perfectly but encapsulate the, the sort of dichotomy of the Overwatch community, where it's like Jeff is like, if I try, I think I can get out of plat, and then there's Josh <laughs> like, man, I'm really struggling to peak 44, man. It's tough out here. <laughs> yeah. The duality. All right, I guess uh, we got a chance to uh, know each other a little bit better. Now uh, let's talk about where we're gonna have dinner. No, um, I guess we should we should get this started, right? Let's get this going. Before I hope into the enjoy questions, I just want to clarify today, while I'm studying to your soul, we will only talk about balance changes, okay? About the balance changes that happened in the previous beta. With this being said, are you ready for the questions? Are you ready for the questions? Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's, let's go. go. So, <clears throat> first of all. <clears throat> I'm curious about your personal views on this. Who's more annoying to play against, Doomfist Tank or Doomfist DPS? I thought this was interesting because I discovered as we were talking about this that me and Josh have different views on this. Uh, I definitely felt like, to me, the DPS version was, uh, you know, more frustrating to play against. Um, but I'm also the one who led the charge on the Doomfist rework, so maybe that makes <laughs> sense. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of fall to the tank side things like they're annoying for different reasons like tank doom fist you just can't kill him and he's always getting away sort of like wrecking ball and he's also like snaring you and doing all sorts of things so we are probably going to try to look at what well, him a little bit that was in my head can, i'm not gonna lie it, it's not really you know a question of he's too powerful or something it's more like trying to even out the gameplay experience for everyone um I'm yeah we have honest, a... I... go ahead go ahead oh uh, we have a change actually planned for beta 2 that's uh you know, we'll see how this plays, but we're going to try just removing the snare from a seismic slam entirely. Um, it's a pretty big shift because it's not just like reducing the snare or something, mm. it's like just killing it. Completely removing um, it. Hmm. But there's That's some cool. like, there's a bit of shenanigans you can do with it beyond just the normal just snaring people. Like you could snare somebody and then ult them if it's like an Ana or Zen or something like that. Like they're kind of screwed because um, the snare just makes it, they can't even get out of the ring. Um, so True. like certainly solves those problems as well. And, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that, you know, he's ends up being balanced correctly I'm worried, yeah but i'm so worried maybe, that it's like you know, he was already kind of tough we'll see, you know that's the plan anyway 
As a support player, I completely approve of this. <laughs> Proper question. How do you balance between the roles? So how do you feel about the power of each role relative to each other? So do tanks need to be as strong as DPS, as strong as supports? Because you know how the Good community question. are. Every, every role thinks the other role is the strongest. So you got to you gotta answer how you feel about this. Yeah, his movement yeah. plus stun I mean, it kind of and the range of it was really power. Far. Like, how do they have equal power? Because they're all doing different things in the game. And really, sort of the end goal is to make sure they all have an impact on the outcome of the match and have like you know a way to kind of parry through their own skills. Um, if we're talking about power just in terms of numbers or something, then in Overwatch 2, it's going to be tanks. They're just, there's only one of them, so they've just kind of got more stats than everyone else, relatively. Can I ask something? Uh, in your view, purpose, who though? do you think has the highest carry potential out of all of the three roles? Your personal points on this, based on your games. I, I mean, I've seen all the roles carry like, super yeah. hard in different ways, because, um, you know, sometimes you just can't kill anything, and support are just, like, you know, making big plays, and on a lance that anti nade and asleep on somebody and it's just like team fights one you know uh reinhardt can come out of nowhere and just earth shatter the entire team uh and that's like a really obvious does that happen? Know, example of like he literally won that fight by himself he just killed everybody but there are a lot more i mean yeah but uh, not come out situations out of nowhere. you know like that kind of just win the fight if mercy's kind of juggling between like healing three different people that are all crit health and it's like making having that decision making to you know, which target are you going to focus first and kind of keep them up? Like, that often wins fights, too. What does balance mean, in your opinion? As in, what's a balanced Overwatch game? What should a balanced tank, DPS, and support do? I mean, it's kind of a tough question to answer, but I mean, broadly speaking, I would say our goal is just to make sure that every hero is viable. That doesn't mean that every hero is viable in every situation, in every map, and everything. I mean, I, I actually think it's fairly healthy for the game when certain heroes... Uh, really shine on certain maps and it's kind of a, a strategic decision making play and when to do that you know obviously there are a lot of maps that Widowmaker's great on and other maps she's not um as example and there were like you know uh this is actually very maps answer. that were you know people tended to play like re66 and Joker Town and stuff these little that, those are the ones people favor to try to, to make the bastion work at least for one run usually um stuff like that so i i really liked it when the maps get integrated that well uh to to the balance and, and the heroes um and there's a lot of just verticality elements, of course, too. Something like Hollywood 2 is like, you know, are you really going to run around there with Tracer? I mean, maybe, but you're gonna, it's going to be kind of tough depending on how you want to deal with the guys on, on the upper upper ground. But the, the, the real thing we just want to make sure is that every hero is viable. And also, if you are want to play like an off-meta pick or something, you maybe you know what the meta is, but you just want to play Junkrat, let's say, that it's not like so out of bounds that you're just like actually throwing. I know some people would say you're throwing. I don't think you're throwing. <laughs> I just think been playing one too many times. Up, it's the yeah. player, you know. That's actually Honest? my biggest pet peeve if I can just like rant for a second. Go, like, Josh, go. go on, go on. You, you know, it. just Overwatch League is a completely different game in terms of like their coordination and teamwork and um, kind of what we've seen over the years on the ladder is that you can really make anything work. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of players that, you know, you jump into rank and you pick some off meta pick and they're just going to threaten to throw your game or something, you know? But really, if you work together, you can kind of uh, succeed with any but, hero. And it come, even I don't, know, I don't agree with that you know, take. Suboptimal. I don't it's, agree with that it's take. It's not like a reason to tilt. Um, I agree, no, I agree with not tilting on it, but I, uh, I think that's just looking at different regions. I think it's a little naive um, they to say to that. So that is at you know different times. Like, uh, certain, like you don't like anything region, can work at any time. They're really like certain metas aren't strong. Like Winston and Zarya dive, and um, they'll kind of see the most uh, meta slaving, I guess, in terms of um, you know what they're picking because uh, there's some heroes like with a super low win rate. Uh, or super super low pick rate and super low uh, win rate, like Moira over there, and it's just they they refuse to play that hero. Um, and then at the same time, we'll see uh, the opposite in like EU, where she's doing really well, and all the the heroes are kind of balanced in their pick rate and win rates more. Um, so there's really this kind of like regional thing where um, just regional a lot of thing, heroes yeah. are more viable than people think, and they're kind of end up getting stuck in their own narrative you know of like what you yeah. see with your own kind of perspective 
when you're playing the game. But. I, all right. No, I that's, 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 that's the 4.3K mentality right I there. I exactly. typically agree exactly. with that, like, but I actually, I understand the enlightening for me, at least, that. because... How does the ranking affect that, uh, you know, that desire for you guys to make every hero viable as well? Like, do you care if a certain hero is not being played in, in gold, and if one hero is being, you know, really heavily played in Owl, but another one isn't? I agree with that. Like, does that influence your decision-making at all? It does. Um... It's you know we would love to have every hero be playable and at least uh, a certain amount or be played uh, at all ranks. Um, that said, it's not, I would say it's not like the number one priority. And there are situations or heroes where we know that things are not going to work out that way, and it's kind of like a sacrifice because of the nature of the hero. So for example, you look at a hero like Widowmaker. Like is Widowmaker going to be as strong at the lower yeah, ranks? So like we know she's not because she, she we really put a lot of pressure um, on her aim, on her aim skill, and you don't get to fire that often. So your expression of accuracy is expressed oh, more aggressively than other heroes. Um, you know, that goes. That's also true for a, hero, a new hero like Sojourn, uh, very similar. So, you know, there are there are things we we look at uh, certainly on the stats and everything to make sure that they're still played because you know at that lower ranks. All that's true that I said about Widowmaker, but at the same time, she kind of gets free reign at those ranks a lot. Like, no one's really pressuring her a lot of times. They're not really looking for her. They don't know she's there. You just you can kind of sit in one spot a lot of times, and you're not really expecting Winston to jump on you anytime soon or get flanked or something. Um, so there are like some defense benefits at that rank too. So I don't say it completely balances out. Um, where you know, like I said, there's some sort of concessions we're making sometimes for certain heroes who we know it's going to be. And you know, and the reverse is true too. We've seen. Bastion's obviously super strong at very low ranks. Um, enough where that was maybe a little bit of a problem when we were looking at reworking him anyway, because he was just like really hard to, to balance at all at the higher ranks without completely eviscerating the lower ranks. Um, but if you guys remember, we did a change for Reaper at one point where we buffed his passive to, I think, 50%. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, I, I remember. I played Reaper, that, Jeff. <laughs> I didn't see that coming, but that was a drastic swing. I mean, people were complaining, especially at the low ranks, that he was just unkillable. And uh, the stats represented that as well. They just showed that that's true. So I was I didn't see that coming. I didn't expect the the leech would be the thing that would cause that to happen because it's hard to know how much incoming damage versus outgoing his damage is going on at different ranks. And at the higher ranks, you know, it's just people are much more accurate and able to you know focus him and punish him for flanks and stuff. So it was less of a big deal. So it was like maybe more balanced at the higher ranks, but we had to change it anyway because the lower ranks it was just like that was that was pushing it too far. So that's a case where it was like okay. This is too far. We can't let this sit. We got to pull this back. Come up with something else. So it can't happen. So is it fair to say you kind of it's it's more like a consideration? Like you don't want anything to be unfun to play against in mm, in a yeah. certain rank, but you're not like gonna shove it in and enforce it. Yeah, like uh, Sojourn and Widow, for example. I don't think they need to have fundamental design changes to their their hero kits um, to try to make it completely even across the board. I think we know when we're making hero like that that whenever we put that much pressure on aim skill, we know it's gonna have that kind of impact and we have to be okay with it but you know we're monitoring all the time like i mentioned with the reaper case so um, as long as it's within reason then we're happy with it what's the best way for the community to give feedback for the heroes they're playing and what type of feedback is helpful for you as a designer uh so we go through a lot of feedback like on a daily basis um and really if you're just Question kind of ranting on, on forums or twitter or something and it's just like quick, hey, this Bastion sucks, or, you know, Roadhog's overpowered, and, like, that's the end of your feedback, like, that kind of just gets glazed oh. over and tossed out, because there's yeah. so much of it, it's just... Ah. You know, I see, I see. It's okay. not super helpful. Like, the, the feedback we like to see uh, is kind of, like, digging into, like, what you're feeling and why you're feeling that way. Um, so you might be thinking, like, oh, I feel like Roadhog's overpowered because he has his one-shot kill. If I get hit by the hook... You know, it's over for me. I don't feel I like I can tell you broken right now. And, watch one. Um, that's you know, that, that's a lot more tank useful for us to try to figure out without anti uh, A lot of times, people do suggest nine hundred effective HP and, plus the fifty you know, percent damage like reduction. Kind of brainstorming exercise. It's thirty percent less ult charge. I think the problem we see with we do it all at the same time. Usually, if it's on a forum or something, people start trying to pick it apart, and like the message gets lost a little bit. It's like, oh no, this solution doesn't work for whatever reason, and that's kind of like. It ends up being the focus a little too much rather than, you know, what the problem is. We have a deleted in Overwatch too. They're going to be more open to <laughs> True. the okay, hero like breaks the game, like how problem, Brig did not necessarily early on. Your, you know, unfiltered well, emotion. That's how I'd summarize take it. Take them right? out of competitive. The like a therapist. Like how Rainbow Six Siege right, okay. did. Okay. Uh, I don't uh, hate the emotion. With, um, it's not like we're like trying I forget, to say, it was a good defender shield operator. Like, yeah. Gotcha. You, usually the biggest problem I see is, you know, people turn the hyperbole up to 11. And it's just like, it's so hard to, 
you know get a read on like the actual game That's a big problem. everything is like the biggest problem in the game yep yeah, I get five biggest problems every day in my chat. Like, this I is hear the one that, thing that, but that's because there's all these right old now, problems that character. have gone on for so long yep. that they've now I'm compounded sure in people's okay, minds. Well, they're like the biggest problem in the reactions, world. Oh, they allowed Mercy Super Jump, but they didn't allow Genji Ledge Dash. So, what's your stance? Like, where is it that a bug is okay, and when is it a bug that's not okay? Yeah. This one's pretty tricky. We don't have like a like a hard rule or anything for for every case. I think we just kind of have to take it case by case. Um, but the broad strategy is we, we first thing we do is look at the bug, obviously see what's going on and see how buggy this stuff is and see what, you know, what the results are and how consistent they are and how easy they are to pull off and just sort of do full investigation on what's actually going on. Um, and then, then we have to decide if like, you know, we want to integrate this into the hero or just fix the bugs. They can't do it anymore. Um, and that's where it starts to get tricky. And we try, realistically, we're trying to just put everything in that we can. I think it's something that players like generally and often they're really kind of cool pieces of tech that we sort of enjoy seeing and you know some in some cases it's just like well you know it's hard because these are bugs right so it's like we can't just be like let's just not, not touch this for all um I'll, I'll get into the mercy case in a second of why we didn't for a while for that one but generally we don't like to just not touch them because you know what if sometimes it puts you through the floor or something like that, right? Like we, <laughs> these are unintended things. So they're a little bit scary to just leave in the game and just hope it works out. And there's no other weird interactions or anything, especially in a, a complicated game like Overwatch. So we tend to want to try to fix them. And then in, in many cases, implement them uh, sort of in a more real way that is more that's safer. And we know that's not going to break the game in some horrible way. The Genji ledge dash, uh, the first thing we noticed is it was sort of extreme how far you could go. Like you could launch like literally halfway across the map. Uh, which was like, okay, well, no matter what, that can't be allowed to stay. <laughs> like, we either need to reduce the effect of the bug somehow, although it's a bug, so that's not easy to do because we'd have to implement something first to be able to, like, nerf it. Um, so, you know, that. So then came up the, the question of Kenji is, like, should we implement this as, like, tech for him? And um, at least at the time, uh, it was really, like, do we really want Genji to have this much more mobility right now? Is this, like, what he needs and what he should have? And um, we sort of came away with that with, no, he, he shouldn't have this, like, you know. I, I think it's a cool piece of tech. Like, it's interesting, but overall, the character, the end result's going to be we're going to have to nerf him somehow, right? Like, if he ends up just being crazy, immediately what's going to happen is people are like, oh, oh, Genji's super overpowered, he needs to be nerfed. So then what do we do? Do we, like, nerf his damage or something or his ult charge rate or something? And, like, is that fair? So, you know, that's kind of, we have to think ahead, and that's where we're going to get to. So it's sort of, like, worth the sacrifice, Um, I felt at the time. And then for the Mercy stuff, that bug's been interesting because um, it really doesn't, it didn't really have any like I hate major the logic scary side effects. So sound on that, and it was some people would agree with this, but it's fairly consistent to do once you know how to do it. Like it's a timing thing that's pretty tricky, but at least it didn't feel like sometimes when I do this, I like if fly backwards good, to my spawn room. Good end result. Again, the logic bugs, makes sense. Happen. So once that we kind of figure out what's going mad. on, we're like okay, know. we see why this is happening. This isn't like going to cause any major issues. No one's going to go through the floor with this one or anything crazy. So. Um, you know, we can let this one sit, but we had tried in the past actually of different ways to implement that. Didn't come up with anything really reasonable. Um, gave it up for a little while, started reinvestigating it, especially with Overwatch 2. Um, and then with this latest Overwatch 2 beta push, we really were just at the point where like, let's just try things. Um, that's kind of why at the end of the beta, it's like if it felt like it was just kind of tossed into the beta, it, it was <laughs> like that. That's the kind of iteration. Honestly, the, the community doesn't see that often. We, we spent a lot of time iterating on, on heroes, uh, on just a design team. And, you know, we'll have ideas thrown up and, um, discarded in, in a single day often. So, you know, coming up on that deadline of the beta, we're like, um, we know people just want to see more stuff and, you know, we can kind of show our work a little bit here. And this probably isn't the solution, but it's kind of like the last week of beta. Let's just, throw it in and see what people think and you know it'll be kind of silly and kind of fun but i don't think i expected that to like be the solution necessarily but it was interesting to get feedback on it and see what people think obviously it's a little overpowered and everything i was just gonna say is that was that generally your approach to the beta as well where you were kind of like we want to push the limits like limit testing i think we're feel more open to trying to putting things earlier on the beta than we usually are for live especially being a beta and a limited yeah, I mean, window that doesn't make sense yeah. just you know trying to have it was hilariously broken and kind of be a little more involved makes... with feedback and, and everything Makes sense doing. That we're trying so, stuff yeah and, and especially as it went on um that that i feel like that was more our philosophy and i think for the this mercy case we have a new 
design we're going to play with. Um, I guess I can mention it here. We have a beta 2. Yes. Uh, I don't know if this is the one either. So there's all kinds of control, control scheme issues with this. But yeah. Okay. I feel like this one doesn't sound maybe as good on paper, so I'm a little worried to say it, but just try it and then get back to me. Uh, okay. This one, the way it's currently working uh, in beta 2 is it, you no longer have the crouch canceled to launch into the air. Instead... Um, you basically kind of you auto launch into the air when you if you reach your target all the way so that you can cancel it still any way you want to. Uh -huh. uh, but if you don't do anything, you just hit the button and let it go. You'll you'll launch into the air. So wait, so it, it super jumps yourself first, but like automatically. A lot of what we're struggling with with her is the control <laughs> issues because we okay. you know, like, crouch is already weird. Like we chose crouch, and I think some people are like, "What? Why is this on crouch?" But it's like, well, we are already using space to cancel for the the you know the normal kind of space. Uh, Fast cancel. Mercy glide. plays itself now. So, you know, <laughs> space would be the obvious button otherwise. Actually, not um, wrong. We we're trying all kinds of other things, and this kind of felt like, well, at least with this one, you still have space cancel and your normal GA kind of shift cancel. But you know, in this case, we it's kind of you can tell that's why they're worried like about saying that out loud because it's it possible sounds this doesn't like work. Tough, I mean, this is what like, we're trying. It's and, still an idea. Uh, this is what the beta's for. So definitely get feedback on it. So we'll see. Um, it's possible. I'm open to it. When you're in the middle of chaos, we'll try and it. I think that's the key. Forget to cancel in some way, and you launch in the air and didn't mean to, and you get sniped or something, you're gonna hate it. So you know, we'll go back to the drawing board on it, but. This is kind of just something we'd like to try and see how that feels. Is I feel like it's one of those changes that until you experience it, it's very hard to like form an opinion. You know, see how yeah, it actually feels it, in I, game. I, so I think Emil's right on this one. Like, feel. it's one of those you're just gonna let it happen, of, um, and then we can be like, stuff. okay. How do you feel about? Wait, wait, I, <laughs> got, I got a follow up on that. I got a follow up on that. Okay. And this is for the former Ryan main in me, and from a boy flats listening somewhere. Why the B-Hop shatter, man? Why'd you take it from us? Why'd <laughs> you take this one piece of joy we had? <laughs> What? I don't even remember making that explicit change. Do you remember, Josh, if we made that like explicitly? That might have just been the side I, effect. I, I, I gotta say something, okay? Wait, they just I, got I, rid I of it? Oh, Jeff, I'm, dude, I'm, I'm bad now. He, does, <laughs> he doesn't remember oh, nerfing, boy, boy. nerfing okay. that? So is that something that's important to you guys? Like, do you still want heroes to be unique, or do you actually want hero overlap to start to come in now? I mean, I would say the goal is to have unique heroes. That's what we want. Um, but we have a lot of other goals, too, um, one of which is making sure the heroes are very understandable and simple, but deep. Um, I mean, that sounds like, I, I feel like other designers that would ever be listening to that, it's like, well, obviously simple, but deep. That's kind of like the goal for every game design ever. But it's it's a pretty big pillar for us. Um, we, you know, a lot of our abilities, when you think of an ability, like, um, let me take an example, like a May Wall. It's a pretty simple ability on paper where it's just, hey, I can create this wall. But yeah. there's some details about it that add some extra depth to it that's, sort of um, gives us more of that feel. So for example, like the flat top means you can stand on it and use it as a ledge and lift people up and things like that. And yep. the fact that they're pillars instead of a single wall health means it interacts with how the enemies deal with it and how they kill it and um, adds a little bit of depth on the defense on the um, on the other end. So the stuff like that is, you know, always a goal um, to keep things understandable but but still deep. So with that goal in mind, it can be tough to keep everything really unique because one way to make everything unique is just to keep adding things to it, right? Like it does this, and in this situation it does this, and like it's different than this ability because when you're stunned, it works this way, and all kinds of like craziness. And a lot of times when we're working on prototypes, we get in that state because we're iterating on something and we want to add a tweak or just change it this way, and then we look at it and we're kind of back up and look at it and we're like this thing's kind of crazy. Do we really want? <laughs> like you look at the tooltip you have to write. You know we have those F1 simplified tooltips and. When those things start to become like a paragraph, we're like, okay, maybe this is, we got to rethink this a little bit. Is this what we want to do? Not too much. You know, that's, that's part of the core philosophy of the design of the game. Um, so that, that sometimes is in conflict with the unique heroes, as I mentioned. So um, I, I'd say broadly speaking, yeah, we want everything to be unique and feel interesting. And that's still a goal, even in cases where there's some overlap, hopefully. Um, and, uh, but yeah, sometimes it's, um, you know, I think as we keep expanding the roster, we'll see some cases it'll be, um, you know, a little more overlap, and I don't think we're super. Yeah, that's fair. Like, but how really do you deal with power creep? That's the kind of question. For example, I think we with something we've talked about. I, this is not a leak of any kind or any kind of spoiler or anything, but we've sort of idly talked about it in this philosophy sense of like, let's say we wanted to do another sniper. What would that even look like? Because a sniper role is pretty niche. You know, we sort of when we made Widowmaker, it's like she's kind of the quintessential sniper with like a charging gun. You have to line your shots up and all this stuff and. You know, here like Ash is pretty snipey, but it's not quite the same range and, and lethality of, of an actual sniper. So what could that look like to actually be different? Um, and, you know, we've never actually really 
try to create that, but it's kind of a, an exercise in what you're talking about, about trying to keep everything unique. You're relating it to Wait, like did they three remove Rissa's shield so they like, could add oh, a new tank with a shield? Question thing, mark, question mark, question mark. Exactly mark. Like There's a tinfoil hat there, right? I like. And I was going to ask that because you said that you started adding some stuff that you were like, this is so complex. You know, we're not even sure we can keep this. Was there anything really fun that you were like, we made this, but we couldn't like, we just scrapped it because we were like, nah, this is just too much. Man, I could tell you a story about, uh, you know, we've been working on uh, Moira changes. That's not much of a secret. We've talked a lot about trying to look for Moira stuff. Um, and you know, we haven't been able to throw anything significant into the beta yet, but we're, you know, we've been looking for stuff for beta too. And, um, you know, like we've tried all kinds of crazy stuff, but I, I'll, I'll just throw one out there. For example, we were trying, um, you know, we had this idea for this, um, you know, what if she could purge, which is kind of like a wow term um, that Shaman's using wow, which is like an offensive dispel. Like what if I could remove buffs, right? Because that's kind of interesting and it kind of fits Moira's kit. And we thought that was kind of cool. Ran into a lot of control scheme issues with how can she do this mechanic now with no buttons left, but how do we do it? Um, and we created a list of what we considered buffs, and it's very complicated in our game. What is a buff? Like, I don't know, is soldier sprinting a buff? Is the movement speed bonus that Genji gets when he ults a buff? Like, does that get stripped? Like, what is a buff in our game? So, you know, we tried to figure out what we would even strip, and it got really complicated really fast. And that was just like, this is going to be completely un not understandable. Um, so, you know, what's an alternative? And that led us to this idea of nullify and what we were calling nullify. And nullify was this idea that you stick an, an enemy with it for some duration, let's say like three seconds or something or five seconds. And during that time, their specifically their damage dealt buffs and their damage received, their less damage received buffs and their speed buffs were set back to non buff status while that effect is on them. So it's kind of like a purge, but it's also state related. Whereas so one of those heroes is either broken in high elo or never played, and in you and low you elo, in either well. people hate her um, or think she's yeah, too strong. Yeah, we tried strong. it on Moira's orb. It, just, it was like, pretty interesting because you could like, like you know, you have the Lucio speed rush coming on you, and you throw the orb at them, and you kind of slow you the enemy team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah nice. It's not a snare. It's not a snare. It just sets them back to normal speed, so it's they're slower than they would be. Um, and of course, there's like trying to hit Genji Nanoblade with it, so to try to nullify Nano and stuff like that was pretty interesting. Um, we ran into a ton of problems with this too. Uh, I don't know if that will ever see the light of day exactly. Um, that got really Aww. complicated also. Um, but I don't know. Now that I just said it, if everyone's super amped on, I'm able to try to fit it in somewhere. But it's, it's, uh, it sounds like it something potential. incredibly broken. It sounds like some, it's something that's <laughs> going to be incredibly broken initially. But yeah. maybe there's a middle ground somewhere. And honestly, I think that it brings a lot of hype to Moega, and it's like something yeah. that's missing from her kit has a reason to pick her other than just like heal and throw damage ribs and stuff, you know, and left click yeah, and that's, that's it. You that's know? a lot of what it's, we're it's talking good. about with It's her. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah for personally, well. I love it. I, lo I love, I lo I love that oh. idea. I know it's going to be broken. I know everybody's going to be like, no! <laughs> So I don't care about it. As a support player, you, you got to be psyched about it, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It also stripped over health for like a little oh, while right. as like part of the nullify mm -hmm. effect, and it was just like this extra big F you to Lucio and his Please. Please. Oh, Lucio mains are crying, man. You just made five Lucio mains cry. Like oh, yeah, all yeah. five of them that are left. So <laughs> that is a little bit of a problem. I mean, a lot of the point was to try to find, or a lot of the point is, I guess, because we're still trying to find stuff from where that feels like those big playmaker opp opportunities, right? Like, if I mm -hmm. if I do that, if I get the Nanoblade and I position, let's say it was the orb, it might not be on the orb or whatever. Let's say it's a projectile, a shoot, or something that hit the tag. A nano blade Genji as it comes in, and I get to nullify the nano. That's a big play, and that's like game winning on your side. Like we really want those. I mean, we were talking about this earlier about you know Ryan could get in and great shatter and kind of win the game for you. We talked about you know you get this clutch res on somebody on your team that has their ult, and they get to ult because you're res, and they you win because of that. So there's all these plays, and that's really core to the game. We want to make sure that heroes have that, and ultimates are a lot of the ways that that's done, but. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, that's why Immortality Field is exists how it is, that's why Sleep Dart is how it is, and all this stuff. So that's kind of been on our mind for Moira. Like, what would it look like, let's put it very simply, like, what does a Moira Reddit clip look like, right? Like, mm, what is the play, I like that. right? I like that. What is the play that you want that is top, the top what posts you, on Reddit? Yeah. For Moira, like it kind of doesn't really exist right now. Maybe you get like a 4K with your ult or something. Yeah, it's, but, but that's it's just not, not exciting. Really, like crazy because it pierces everything and you're fast and you're regening, so maybe it's not that hard to get. But like you know, if there was some playmaking opportunity there, you would see more of that. I actually kind of like, like that way of thinking, though. Like like making things more ideas. hype and more fun. I'm, that's a, I'm, I'm that's a really good way to think. I think. Gonna... Josh, I gotta I gotta ask you this. You said that you play a lot of Ana, okay? That's why and I think she needs rework. You... 
I, I've tried Anna for the first time in the beta. Uh, up until then, I never played Anna in my life. <laughs> I know that she had 12 bullets, and in the beta, she had 15 eventually. How mm. does magazine size and reload speed affect hero balance? Why 15 bullets? Why increase the, the magazine size? You know, magazine size is kind of like a bigger like deal. knows the answer to that. Than others. Um, in Anna's case, you know, you're kind of choosing between shooting enemies and shooting allies. And, you know, we usually limit... Um, the firing duration by you know changing the clip and you know your firing rate but uh in honest case we had to nerf the bionade so in order to give her back a little power um one of the easiest avenues for that is just like extending how long she can go before she has to reload and like how much healing she can do with that one clip um and it's kind of like we picked that aspect because you know rather than changing her healing numbers or her damage numbers because you kind of want those to be in sync you know she does 70 for each um and doing something like just giving her raw health like we did for Zenyatta, so, that's one of the like the biggest changes you can make so it was kind of like compensation for the nade nerf that's what you had in mind yeah yeah um, so like a little something you know to to make sure she doesn't drop in her win rate all that much and um you know hopefully it helps a little. Uh, I see, I see. I'm afraid that Anna's probably going to get really nerfed considering how strong she is in Overwatch 2. So, um, please don't nerf Anna. <laughs> oh, Jeff already nodded. It's over. Anna's yeah. one of the most popular heroes. So, yeah. she's nerfed pretty her a hard little to bit already. Yeah. And it's going out back in the, the glue factory. It's really strong. It's always been insane. It's like a grandma out oh, back. Honestly, what if you missed the name? I don't know. Get good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> i like it get good get good it was interesting because you mentioned you know pick rate does that like at all like do you care for heroes getting picked a lot like in that sense like are you like whoa this hero is getting picked too much we know certain heroes are the favorites in fact it's kind of interesting stat we i don't think we shared this one i'm not sure but we were looking at stats um like just after a season like a comp season and when it's like people are playing i don't know let's say they're playing quick play for a minute when we have a, a you know, a large off season. In the past, we had a pretty large off season, actually. But we would look at the stats in the off season, and like, just see the pick rate change. And it, especially when you hear like Anna, uh, is not meta at the time, and you just see like the pick rate just spike because it's like, oh, we get to play whatever we want now. Let's everyone plays Anna, yeah. basically. <laughs> so, so whenever she's good. Yeah, definitely. You know, does it ever go the other way then? Do you ever think, well, in the off season, everybody loves playing these heroes. These are the quote unquote fun heroes. Should we make them more meta? Does it ever go that way? I mean, sometimes, yeah. We've talked about that. Uh, I mean, it's, it's actually less that and more of the opposite where we, we've we seen heroes that people don't like meta. Like Torb was a big one and Torb got his passive buff to be huge. We, at that point, we're like, man, Torb's never been meta. Like, let's just buff him up a bunch and just let him get played. And then, you know, we'll nerf him if he gets like really crazy. Um, and then I, I still stand by, I don't think he was like absurdly overpowered. I think he was very playable and he was got, probably going to be in the meta and people just rebelled instantly. It was like, you cannot do this. The game is broken. The game is horrible. So it was like, all right, well, okay, that's not going to happen. Then let's just nerf that back down. It was kind of an uproar. And it was like, at that point we're like, you know, we don't think he's super overpowered, but clearly people don't really want the Bastion meta to exist. So <laughs> that's sort of no. why it's like, that's why he's like. He needs a rework. I mean, if we can't ever buff him because people don't want to don't want to play against him or play him, he, he just needs a rework because that, that kind of ties our hands, mm. right? So ah, uh, so this is like what you take into consideration also with like reworks and stuff. Like if people don't view their kits as fun or they they're not having fun yeah. playing against them, then that's when you think about reworking that hero. Ah, so this explains the Doomfist rework. Ah, okay, I got it. I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you mentioned as well, Josh, actually, that, you know, potentially adding HP or taking away HP is, is like something you think about. What, what, at what point do you think about that? Because obviously I'm, you know, it, it's a big, it's a big decision, right? Like to change someone's HP. So at what point do you go, okay, HP, let's, let's tweak it. Um, it's usually if we need to make like a big swing in like their win rate, like they're doing really poorly or, you know, um, it's like one of the most powerful avenues we have for buffing a hero is actually changing their, their health pool just because it affects so many breakpoints and things like that. Um, but we generally try to reserve it for like close range heroes or heroes without mobility. And um, if there's other ways to clearly buff them that are easy, like that's usually the better way to go rather than changing HP because it is such a big swing. And we also want to avoid, you know, the situation where we're just doing this power creep of like inflating everybody's health pools and like, you know, increasing the time to kill by a whole lot. 
Um, and then Anna's gonna have a thousand HP and so on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you know it, it really affects like how quickly you can like end the team fight and how how much healing impacts things if you know they have huge health pools because eventually the DPS are gonna hit their reload and then healing's gonna catch up and you're just gonna have HP pools kind of spiking up and down like constantly a little too fast. If there's a way to buff the hero without changing their HP, that's usually the way to go. Also, when I tweeted that, and that's something that... you're quite conscious about, like power creep. You know, you you mentioned it, not my word, but you know, is that something you're quite yeah, yeah. conscious about? It's definitely a big concern for the the community as well. Of some stuff here. Speaking of stuff, I don't have a good segue. Uh, do you think <laughs> you'll bring back some CC to the game? Will the new heroes have some form of CC, or the hard CCs will always be Ana Sleep Dark, Reinhardt Shatter? Also, will Cassidy ever get I his stun back? Listen, we support small struggling streamers. I feel like, like these two questions are heavily fuck, related. Uh, I feel like why is all the boards are here taking shots? Like, what is this? Is happy hour? I'm talking about stuff. Holy like this. shit! Um, so it's been tough. Uh, you know, it's it's tough because we're we're getting a lot of feedback that says people really appreciate the less cc broadly speaking in the game especially when the beta ended we saw multiple posts and and got feedback internally too about people going back to overwatch one and feeling like man i was kind of enjoying the lack of cc <laughs> falling back into this now where there's so much cc in the game. Is, i got a couple of clips you know, to show you jeff i kind of missed the, the lack of cc so <laughs> Sorry, they're certainly tied together it. and it's tough to just sort of be like oh cassidy needs help let's put a stun back because we're sort of slipping on the whole the whole meta point of having less cc um, though I will say we have been reviewing some of them, and um, this is, I guess, another spoiler for Beta Two. But we're uh, for Junkrat, we're giving his trap back, his his full his full mobilize. Uh, for that one, we felt like totally unbiased. Yeah, no, I, I don't even like Junkrat. I don't know what you're talking about. I wish he sucked. Um, no, yeah, he, um, you know, I, I think we felt like it was a little more on the fair side of the CCs. You can kill it, you can see it, or well, hopefully. You can see it and kill it. And also, it doesn't completely stun you. You can still shoot, and you can still use some of your abilities to, um, to escape. And um, it was a little hard to tune that ability uh, in the way that it was, where it was like this big slow and still feel like it was impactful for him to throw uh, and stuff like that. So for him, I gave him that back. But you know, we're still trying to hold the line on the rest of the changes for now. And um, I sort of hear the feedback on Cassidy. I kind of I get it. I understand it. I know that like I actually think Cassidy's people, pretty good. Um, or, you know, we've gotten the feedback. I should say that. Uh, he doesn't feel as effective as like this counter flanker and stuff anymore. Um, you know, we were hoping that the the sticky nade will would accomplish a lot of that same threat, his sort of close range threat zone that um, you know he could control space a little bit. Obviously, it's not quite as powerful in some situations, although it is a little more powerful in other situations. But you know, I I don't know that he's like uh, has a huge problem necessarily, um, but that certainly is a change for him, and you know. We'll monitor it. I, I'm a little worried for all the reasons I mentioned before about actually just returning his stun to him because it's one of the major stuns in the game. Yeah. Um, I actually and, uh, think keeping it out is the best you know, call. That's my something opinion. Something we did to try to help with the flanking situation <laughs> as well as giving... Uh, I think his sticking is, is insanely powerful. We, we nerfed Tracer's damage quite a bit. And for the history of the game, I don't think we've ever nerfed her damage that I can remember. Yeah. Um, so she's. I think she just had some ult changes a long time ago, but she's been pretty stable. So goes to show that like you know we're kind of pretty aware that like her lack of counters or her lack of a counter what if we and stun, turn stun but took fan um, hammer or at no. least reduced stun, counter, stun, stun is the bad part against her uh, as you know certainly increased her power so we've reduced her a little Think bit this way and i'd love to try Play to get Ryan the game and, and you get anti right you get anti you're 150 hp you're jumping back with shield you're trying to wait because out another problem right the stuns walks up we had just flashing over the top boom just you're just dead um like doesn't matter anymore. Wrecking ball. They, out, they outplay us. Fist, you you like basically have sort to of like we're balanced you with the flick time up or flick like, down. Well, they have these hard counters. I think it's healthier for the game that the counters aren't that hard and that required, especially for on the newer player side because they just don't know that. And this is like Doomfist just gets to ruin their day and they have no idea what to do. Um, so it's like you don't want a, a hard yeah. stop, you know? Like you want to play the game and don't want to be like stopped instantly. There's a stun. You can't do your play, I guess. Yeah. Kind of yeah, like I mean, it's not fun for Doomfist and it's not fun for the person who doesn't want to play Cassie to stop Doomfist, right? So. It's healthier for the game if it, it doesn't require that on either side. Will the new heroes have some form of CC? Stuff yeah, like we're that. trying to not do that. I'm, I'm, so, mm -hmm. so, no, basically. I, think, uh, I thought Cassidy felt good. To the I thought he was strong. Was tanks. If we do yeah. add anything. Tanks? So you think that stunts should be, belong to tanks, not supports? <clears throat> yeah, I'm not, I don't play support. Absolutely. Okay, so tanks should have, like, the tools to deny engages and so on. DPS should have the tools Go. to like, get kills and so on. Then... 
supports, I guess, try to stay alive and heal. What's the view of it, of of this? Of support. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, the, the point of the change was to relegate all of the stuns and CC and mechanics and stuff to the tanks. I mean, obviously, it's not 100% May can still stun with her ult and there's still sleep. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's a few outliers and that Jeff right now has the root back, I guess. But by and large, we're trying to just make sure it's only in the tank role, which does a lot of things for us. For one thing, there's only one tank now, so the most there can be is one hero's worth of stuns. Even if we make a tank that has this very stun heavy, the game as a whole still won't feel like it has that many stuns in it compared to what Overwatch 1 could feel like sometimes. So that helps us a lot there. It also helps just sort of you know, as you were kind of mentioning, give the tanks a little bit more uh, of an identity as from a role standpoint that they're able mm -hmm. to, you know, earth shatter and stuff like that and, and pin and land these big, big moves like that. So I, I think Emma was trying to like get at and I'll, I'll, I'll follow up for him. He's kind of like, what is support's job? Already that breaking his follow up. What does the support do? What's the, what should the support What's do? What's their remit? I don't know if it's like that bucketed so easily that there's like the thing that supports do. I mean, the thing. As we were talking about before, we want the heroes to be unique. I mean, supports um, can do a lot of playmaking opportunities. Supports have a lot of See that lag right there and things that affect that was their the backup team. program kicking um, in. Again, none of these are hard rules. There's there's things that break this. I mean, like you know, Widowmaker's ultimate kind of affects your team. It's kind of like a buff your team. It's not like an enemy targeted thing, even though it kind of is stuff like that. So it's not a hard rule. Um, but you know, we tend to try to think of it as like tank ults are like initiating tools and big like enemy team focused abilities often and things like that, and often CC related. And support tools are more team focused by and large. Um, so you're focused more on making your team stronger, saving them, and stuff like that. So you're not um, doing DPS things to more damage. You're not, you're not doing things to the enemies. You're doing things to your teammates to help them do things to the enemies, kind of like right, that. Exactly. Yeah. And I again, see. not all cases. The, it, yeah, of it, course, it's not like this is, no, nothing's understand. a hard rule. In fact, it's mm -hmm. better for the game if none of these are hard rules. Enablers, so support should be enablers, I guess. Exactly. I got a question, which I think a lot of the community are very interested in. Certainly, I get asked about it a lot. Will we see balance changes to Overwatch One while we're kind of rolling out Overwatch Two? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. To be honest, I, I think we would like to look into more stuff. We actually had an hit us with a straight match. match. We were playing around with oh, the we ended up going with um but it was right after the last community card um we were looking at some of the, some ideas there maybe bringing in um we ended up not doing it i think it's a reasonable ask um and you know it's it's hard when we're so we have all these resources so focused on overwatch 2 and trying to make sure we get these dates and everything sorted to try to spend some time on it but but i do think it's a reasonable ask yeah so i, I, really I don't want to commit to anything but yeah yeah no commitment, but I really would like to do. Just uh, hear me out. Ready? One. Um, Throw it back it to old Overwatch. Just like, hard nerf. Take away too much Sigma, the Arisa, well Hog. Drops, and then, hard buff. You know, um, Anna, Ryan, Diva. Actually, Diva, maybe Diva doesn't need it. Zarya definitely does. Game Winston. Depends, you know, you need animation. And just effects, hard and force dive like slash right? rush metas. So The OG two metas. Just force it. No, No one will care. A little more experimental than we usually send do, it off on a good note. We don't want to get too arcadey or like a circus or something because it is it is still like a live service. Um, I and mean, there's also kind of the question of like, do these changes that we make to the live game also roll into Overwatch Two? Um, no, just are we only like picking to couple it changes that just can boom kind of just be compatible that way? Buff the shit out of the crazy the, with, some of the older stuff. She's changing nerf some of the newer you know, stuff that people are so tired of playing. She's getting a whole rework. Chaos. But chaos. I, I mean, it'd be definitely cool to do something. Chaos. That's very interesting. A lot of considerations that yeah. I don't think we always think about. Yeah, we don't think about it, but um, we definitely mercy. appreciate the Lucio. answer. And appreciate the transparency Anna. with this. I bet like it's, it's really hard to say right. uh, stuff like this. And honestly, speaking of Genji. transparency, just wanted to say a big shout out to like who so, had the idea uh, of maybe soldier? The stats actually soldier actually stats that increased his win rate and so on. I, the I, I, I absolutely loved it. I think a lot of people loved it as well. Like that type of transparency is is just through the charts. It's it's amazing, honestly. It's it's really and nice for to being see, here like, as well. And for being here as well, yes, for being here as well. We're speaking of which, sure, I sure. only I'm gonna keep you one more for one more question. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Last question. Last question. What's the biggest change that Five versus Five brought to your hero balance philosophy? You want to go first, Josh? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is like. A whole lot of things we kind of have to feel out for you know the loss of a tank 
And early on, we kind of uh, felt team fights were going on a really long time. And we, we kind of nailed it down to like healers are just healing so much. And there's you know, tanks. Yeah, support, you know. Uh, supports, yeah, support, supports, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's my trigger word. I'm sorry. Yeah, support, you got support. him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, got him. I yeah. actually thought there's more people that heal than just the supports, but you know. Uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're on a main job, or you say you play like I betrayed them. You betrayed us. Ace Attorney yeah. ML7. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a point I'm getting to, but um, one thing that I felt ML the game joined me on the blacklist less healing overall. I'm and, just kidding. Um, the reason for that. It's just it makes damage more valuable, you know. It makes sustained damage and burst damage a little more equal, and you know they're they're just raw value. And then you don't have um, you don't have to tune the damage as high, so you know you don't have HP pools kind of bouncing from like one HP to full HP. You know we've all had that person in comp make the call like, you know, junk rats one a one, you know, kill him, and you turn and you shoot him like within a second, and he's full HP already. And it's like. Or they lied. Oh, one of the two. You know, you're not a clue. You know, they, they usually the lie. second. I think Simber right. can they do usually it. Lie, yeah. like, He's oh, yeah. obsolete. <laughs> Simber actually has access. They've been healed. Uh, and there is kind of like this kind of catch twenty two where there are support players that want to primarily heal, and so if we lower healing overall, then they feel like they're kind of trapped into that, that Still, heal yeah, bot yeah. status a little bit more than they were before, just because you know the numbers are literally making you heal more often to get to full HP. Um, but I think there's like a, a balance to be struck there where as designers, we want to create interesting choices, right? You see this in like Ana and Mercy's design where you can damage boost, you can heal. And there should be like kind of a little bit of tension between like, when do I do one over the other? In Overwatch 1, that's, you know, a majority of the time the right answer is to heal rather than damage. And Good. um yeah. And going into Overwatch too, um, something we've seen the community kind of pick up on is, you know, sometimes it's a little more valuable for support to be doing more things than just like pocketing your tank or DPS and just pumping all the heals into them. Like sometimes it's a lot better to try go for like an angle and apply pressure to the enemy team or, you know, land a utility on them like a, a sleep dart or a nade or something. You know, contribute to the fight a little more than just heal botting. Um, so we, we ended up removing the, the heal reduction because, you know, it was already trending in the direction that it was valuable su for support to be doing that sort of thing. And when we definitely don't want it to push too far in the other direction where that's all they're doing. Um, ideally the right balance would be, you know, it's kind of a tough decision to make in the moment. Like, should I heal this guy? Should I try to damage him? You know, the end result is as long as the enemy's HP bar runs out before your team's does, you're kind of, you're winning, right? So. Hopefully we can achieve that balance. I don't know if we're there yet, but it's a work in progress. That's why you're the, the 4700 or whatever, and I'm in plat. <laughs> you got the, the four head strats of uh, make the enemy it's... health bars run out before your teeth do. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> Broadly speaking, like really high level, not really. There's not like major changes to the stuff I mentioned earlier about trying to make, keep everyone viable and playable at all ranks and everything. But there's so many like nuanced details about only one tank and there's less barriers and um you know the things we were really worried about weren't necessarily even a problem at the beginning like you know way in the past we talked about there was some concern that widow was just going to run the show a little bit because less barriers and but you know people are already adjusting and getting good at using corners and stuff to to um reduce her prowess and uh you know we ended up buffing her actually in the beta of all things and we were worried about Zen actually at one point because there's only one tank. You just discord the one tank there is and just dogpile him. And we were worried that that might be the strap, but like that doesn't, you know, Zen needed help too, ultimately, turned out. Um, so, you know, we're, we're still learning a lot as well and um, figuring out exactly how this is all going to shake out. But I mean, that's what the beta is for, right? I guess uh, we're going to end on, uh, on this stone. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, we loved it. I hope other people loved it as well. I'm sure that they loved it. I saw in uh, chat a lot of giga chats and a lot of thank yous for doing this. And uh, chat is saying that both of you are very cute. So <laughs> just letting you know that, okay? Uh, this was, tell them we love them, okay? Tell them we love them. They say that they love you. So thank you so much for this. This was awesome. And we're excited to see, to see the future, you know? Excited to see the future. True. So, uh, have a good lunch. Have a good rest of the day. And uh, take care. See ya. Thank you, guys. Okay. Yeah, thanks, guys, a lot. Thanks, everybody. Bye. That was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. That was actually pretty good. Oh, great.
Oh, their mic didn't get cut. I heard Jeff go, great. <laughs> All right, what are the big takeaways that I got out of that? It seems like everything's still a work in progress. It seems they actually have a pretty good grasp of where they want to go um, and what they want to, to do uh, with, like, the whole idea of tanks having... Um, tanks being the ones with CC supports are being, are going more towards the role of like, they don't exactly have like this, like complete, you know, like, Oh, they're only supposed to be healing. You know? Um, I, yeah, I learned that my walls are bugged. Um, now seriously, uh, considering that I might need to do a sweep of the apartment, uh, because that was a very, uh, interestingly timed, uh, self-aware, uh moment uh speaking of self-aware it seemed they were very self-aware i like the donkey reference at the beginning that was funny as shit but i mean like the most the biggest thing overall is i'm scared it's gonna be a long time it's gonna be a long time before we really get into this game um and that from a content business standpoint gets me really really scared uh, but i do appreciate them being more transparent and like talking about stuff like for example even like entertaining the thought of like, oh hey, like maybe we can do something to Overwatch One, you know, um, you know we can try something, you know. So it's like it's not out of it's not like no, that is not going to happen. It's like yeah, you know what? I mean, we haven't really talked about it because we're so busy with this other thing. But like, you know, if it's gonna be a longer time, why not? Right? Like, is that possible? It kind of like it kind of sh- like it's almost like a level moment. Does that make sense? Where it's like. You're leveling with them and being like, hey, listen, dude, like, we understand that it sucks going back to Overwatch 1, and we know that you guys are excited for Overwatch 2, um, and we want you to play it, but at this very moment, it's going to be a little tough for you guys to to go through this time period, if that makes sense. Um, so that was kind of cool. Hearing their philosophies on certain things was kind of cool. The tinfoil hat theory is that there's another shield tank coming. It seems, you know, like that uh, they were they were very concerned with shields in the game, and it doesn't seem like it was like that big of a problem. And they want to find, you know, because they talked about anchor tanks, and uh, I wonder if they don't think there's enough of them right now. So, tinfoil hat theory is maybe a a new shield tank in the next beta. But I I, I think they're holding firm on the reducing CC thing with like the whole cast that you talk about, and uh, yeah, you know, it, it's nice to see. It's nice to see.